Hello everyone, welcome back to my Anglaholic. In this video, we will be discussing the MCQs or we can say that the previous year's question paper of Chhattisgarh Civil Judge Examination. This is the 2003 question paper of Chhattisgarh Civil Judge Examination. So we will complete this previous year's question paper of Chhattisgarh Civil Judge Examination. So let's get started from the question number one. Before we start the paper, please make sure that you have subscribed the channel. Now let's get started from question number one. Whether the pendency of a suit in a foreign court will preclude the courts in India from trying a suit founded on the same cause of action? Options are yes, option B no, option C it will depend on the nature of the suit and option D finding will be said on valuation of the suit. Here in, in question number one correct answer is option B. Option B is the correct answer that is no. Section 10 explanation of CPC provides that the pendency of suit in a foreign court does not preclude the courts in India from trying a suit founded on the same cause of action. So let's guess, uh, let's proceed to the question number 2. The provision of res judicata also apply to the execution proceedings of a decree. Options are true, option B false, option C res judicata only applies to the suit and option D not apply if objection is raised by JDR. Here in question number 2, correct answer is option A. That is true. Uh, to, for the reference, here you can also read the section 11 of explanation 7 of CPC. Question number 3. In case of a public nuisance, a suit for declaration and injunction may be instituted by options are A. Two persons with the leave of the court. Option B. Two persons having obtained oral consent of the Advocate General. C. Two persons having obtained the written consent of the Advocate General. And option D. Two persons having no special loss by such public nuisance. Here, in question number three, correct answer is option A. Here, section one, section ninety-one of CPC is related to the public nuisance, and the correct answer is option A. Question number four. In which of the following cases can C set of the claim? Options are A sues C on a bill of bill of exchange. C alleges that A has wrongfully neglected to ensure C is good and is liable to pay in compensation. B A sues B and C is for rupees one thousand. The debt is due to C by A alone. C A sues B and C for rupees one thousand. The debt is due to C by A alone. And option D A sues C on a bill of exchange of rupees five hundred. C holds a judgment against A for the recovery of debt of rupees 1000. Here in question number 4, correct answer is option D. Here, order 8, rule 6, illustration will also be applied in this question. Uh, a sues on a bill of exchange for rupees 500. B holds a judgment against A for rupees 1000. The two claims being both definite, pecuniary demands may set off. So option in question number 4, option D is the correct answer. Question number 5, where the defendant is confined in a prison, the summons shall be served. Option A, by affixing outside the prison, by sending process server in the prison, by delivery of the summons to the officer in charge of the prison for the service of the defendant and D, by production warrant through court. Here in question number 5, correct answer is option C. By delivery of the summons to the officer in charge of the prison for the service of the defendant. Question number 6. Whether the appeal or revisional court can return the plaint under order 7 rule 10 of CPC after the set aside of the decree. Options are A. No. B. On technical ground. C. With the consent of parties. And D. Yes. Here in question number 6, correct answer is option D. That is yes. Order 7, Rule 10 explanation will be illustrated to this question. Question number 7. The plaint shall be rejected in the following grounds also. Option A, where it is not filed in two copies, where it is not supported with affidavit, where the plaintiff has not affixed this photo and where the plaintiff does not put his signature. Here in question number 1, uh, sorry, question number 7, correct answer is option A. That is where it is not filed in duplicate or not filed in two copies. Uh, for more, information you can also read order 7 rule 11 of CPC now let us proceed to question number 8 where the defendant appears and the plaintiff does not appear when the suit is called for hearing and where a part of the claim is admitted the court shall option a dismiss the whole suit option B dismiss the suit so far as it as it relates to the remainder C pass the decree of the whole claim and D 
proceed ex parte proceedings against defendants here correct answer is option b that is dismiss the suit so far as it relates to the remainder this answer will also be related to the order 9 rule 8 question number 9 where the appellate has withdrawn the appeal preferred against a decree passed ex parte the application under order 9 rule 13 shall be option a rejected option b returned option c maintainable and option d referred for the opinion of the appellate court here in question number 9 correct answer is option c that is maintainable question number 10 if the sufficient cause is shown by the parties for adjourn the hearing of the case of the court shall not adjourn the case more than option a once twice three four times here in question number 10 correct answer is option c that is thrice or three order seven order 17 and rule one regarding the provision of the adjournment of the case is provided in cpc now let us proceed to question number 11 in every case the examination of chief shall be on affidavit orally by typing in this court as court thinks fit correct answer is a that is on affidavit question number 12 where a suit abates or dismissed under order 20 or uh, under order 22 of the cpc on the same cause of action option a new suit may institute with the consent of the parties b with the prior permission of the court fresh suit may file c no fresh suit shall be brought and d if sufficient cause shown then new suit may file here in question number 12 correct answer is option c no fresh suit shall be brought order 22 rule 9 clause 1 provides that a suit abates or is dismissed under this order no fresh suit shall be brought on the same cause of action now let us proceed to question number 13 whether a minor on attaining majority may if a sole plaintiff apply that a suit instituted in his name by his next friend be dismissed on the ground that it was unreasonable or improper options are no option b with the consent of the next friend c yes and d joint application will be next friend here in question number 13 correct answer is option c that is yes Question number 14. Where any injunction is passed without giving notice to opposite party, the court will try to decide the application within 7 days, 15 days, 21 days, 30 days. Correct answer here is option D that is 30 days. Question number 15. Immovable property does not include timber. Options are true, false, till it is rooted in this earth. D only the branches of timber does not include an immovable property here in question number 15 correct answer is option a that is true immovable property does not include timber it is provided in the section 3 of the transfer of property act which defines immovable property uh, which doesn't include timber growing crops or grass question number 16 under section 5 of the transfer of property act living person does include company also option a true option b false option c company is not living person and option d company cannot transfer its assets here in question number 16 correct answer is option a that is true a living person includes a company or association or body of individuals whether incorporated or not section 5 of the transfer property act is related to living person question number 17 where writing is not expressly required by law a transfer property may be made orally option a false option b transfer can only be made by writing c with the consent of the parties oral transfer can be done and option d true here in question number 17 correct answer is option d that is true oral transfer can be done question number 18 a lets a farm to be on a condition that he shall walk 100 miles in an hour option a the lease is void option b lease can be ex executed if b walks 100 miles an hour C lease can be executed and D conditional transfer can be made. Here in question number 18, correct answer is option A. That is, that is uh, the lease is void. The, and for more information, you can also find this example in the illustration uh, in the illustration of section 25 of Transfer Property Act and illustration A of the TPA. This illustration has been provided. Question number 19. Transferee of the part performance has right to protect his possession. Option A wrong. Option B right can accrue only after payment of full consideration. C right and D delivery of possession is not necessary. Here in question number 19 correct answer is option C that is right.
क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग इज यूज फ्रक्शू मॉडगेज ऑप्शन ए वेयर विदाउट डिलीवरी ऑफ द पोजेशन ऑफ द मॉडगेज प्रॉपर्टी बाइंड सेल्स टू पे द मॉडगेज मनी बी वेयर विदाउट डिलीवरी ऑफ द पोजेशन ऑफ द मॉडगेज बट रिटेन द प्रॉफिट ऑफ द प्रॉपर्टी सी वेयर मॉडगेज एर बाइंड सेल्स टू री पे द मॉडगेज मनी ऑन अ सर्टेन डेट एंड ऑप्शन डी नन ऑफ द अब हेर एंड क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी दैट इज नन ऑफ द अब अंडर सेक्शन फिफ्टी एट क्लॉज डी ऑफ टी पी ए यूज फ्रक्शन मॉडगेज द प्रॉपर्टी इज डिफाइंड द प्रॉपर्टी इज गिवेन एज अ सिक्योरिटी टू द मॉडगेजी हु इज लेट इन टू पोजेशन एंड परमिटेड टू रिपे हिमसेल्फ आउट ऑफ द रेंट्स एंड प्रॉपर्ट ऑफ सच प्रॉपर्टी फॉर मोर इन्फॉर्मेशन रीड सेक्शन फिफ्टी एट ऑफ द ट्रांसफर प्रॉपर्टी एक्ट क्वेश्चन नंबर ट्वेंटी वन टर्मिनेशन ऑफ लीज ऑफ इमूवल प्रॉपर्टी शेल बी इन द फॉलोइंग मैनर ऑप्शन ए by oral intimation by written notice by sending agent by telephonic intimation here in question number 21 correct answer will be option b that is by written notice question number 22 a lease of immovable property from year to year or exceeding 1 year may be can be made option a only after only before notary option b valid if executed before magistrate c agreements made by parties will be effected and d only by registered instrument correct answer here is option d that is only by a registered instrument that is section 106 of the transfer property act now let us proceed to question number 23 gift comprising of future property is valid options are right b wrong c gift property may be provided in future to validate d future gift will be valid if doni accepted it here in question number 23 correct answer will be option b that is wrong for more information related to gift you can also read section 124 of the transfer property act which provides that a gift of future property is void therefore not valid question number 24 universal doni is option a not liable for any debts or liabilities option b doni is liable for all debts to liabilities existing at the time of gift c doni is only liable for half of the liabilities and d doni is liable for the one third of the liabilities here in question number 24 correct answer is option b that is doni is personally liable for all debts to liabilities existing at the time of gift provided in section 128 of the transfer property act question number 25 Transfer of actionable claim can be exemption under Section 130 of the Transfer Property Act. A. It does not apply to the transfer of life insurance policy. B. It does not apply to transfer of marine or fire policy. C. It does not apply to vehicle insurance policy. And D. None of the above policy applies. Here in question number 25, correct answer is option D. That is none of the above policy applies. Question number 26. Whether the furniture provided by landlord is defined as the accommodation under Section 2 of the AC Act. options are no option b furniture never be accommodated c yes and d furniture is attached with land can be can be in accommodation only here in question number 26 correct answer is option c that is yes section 2 of the ac act question number 27 accommodation which is the property of the government accommodation control act shall not apply option a true option b government may apply through not notification option c false and option d with the consent of the government and tenant it can apply here in question number 27 correct answer is option a that is true question number 28 pagdi means as defined in section 6 of the ac act option a deposits which is refundable b premium or cash received or claimed in addition to rent d amount which is received by landlord as agreement and d special amount for special place or accommodation here in question number 28 correct answer will be option b that is premium or cash received or claimed in addition to rent question number 29 member of the family option a married sister option b a friend service a friend in service living together option c unmarried sister and option d married daughter here in the given option only unmarried sister will be the member of the family here option c is the correct answer that is unmarried sister question number 30 in any eviction decree is obtained on the basis of compromise then on execution option a the executing court has not right to inquire about the validity of the decree b executing court will see whether grounds was available or not c tenant has right to challenge the decree as no ground was available under section 12 of the act and d landlord has right to impose new condition for execution 
Here in question number 30, correct answer will be option A. That is the executing court has no right to inquire about the validity of the decree. Question number 31. If not specific places agreed regarding the payment of rent between the landlord and tenant, the tenant will pay the rent. Option A, in the business place of the landlord. Option B, in residential house of the landlord. Option C, the landlord will come to the tenant and receive. And option D, rent will be deposited in bank account of landlord. Here in question number 31, correct answer is option B. That is in the residential house of the landlord. Question number 32, plaintiff lives in another city. But casually when he comes, lives in the suit house with his family. Option A, it doesn't include in bona fide need of plaintiff. B, where plaintiff lives in another city, how it could bona fide need. C, it also includes bona fide need of plaintiff. And option D, when the plaintiff comes to enjoy, vac enjoy vacation, it includes bona fide need. Here in question number 32, correct answer is option A. That is, it doesn't include bona fide need of plaintiff. Question number 33, tenant cannot sue against subtenant. Why? Option A. Because the contract is voidable. Option B. As there was no contract. Option C. As no permission taken from landlord. And option D. Because the contract is void. Here in question number 33, correct answer is option C. That is, as no permission taken from landlord. Question number 34. If stairs of the house is dismantled as unsafe, whether tenant can get any relief under section 38 of the Accommodation Control Act, AC Act. Option A. Yes. Option B. No. Option C. It can be directed to re-erect the stairs. And option D. It depends on the discretion of the RA. Here, in question number 34, correct answer is option C. That is, it can be direct. It can be directed to re-erect the stairs. Question number 35. Who can take cognizance of the offence mentioned under section 44 of the Accommodation Control Act? Option A. Third class magistrate. Second class magistrate. First class magistrate. Second class executive magistrate. Here, in question number 35, correct answer is option C. That is, first class magistrate. Question number 36. Agriculture includes beetle leaves and water nuts produce. Option A, no. Option B, only paddy, wheat and pulses included. Option C, right. And option D, till today not included. Here in question number 36, correct answer is option C. That is right. Question number 37. Rent means as defined in section 2 clause 1 in CG Land Revenue Code, Chhattisgarh Land Revenue Code, Option A, money or kind payable on account of land, B, consideration paid during the sale of the land, C, income tax imposes by the income tax department and D, service money given to Kotwar. Here in question number 37, correct answer is Option A, money or kind payable on account of land. Here, now let us proceed to question number 38. Within how many period a person who lawfully acquired the right in land shall report to the revenue department? Here the correct answer is option C that is 6 months. Within 6 months the right in land shall report to the the person who have acquired the right in land shall report to the revenue department. Now let us proceed to question number 39. At the end of which month in village Patel shall direct the holder of the land to rectify the defective survey mark option a july option b june option c october and option d november here in question number 39 correct answer is option d that is november for more information you can also read section 128 of the chhattisgarh land revenue code question number 40 who can correct the errors in record of rights in which parties admit option r tehsildar revenue inspector sdo collector correct answer is option c that is sdo Question number 41. When a transfer of land is done by a tribe, then who can file application under section 170A of the Land Revenue Code? Options are by son of the seller, by the seller only, by revenue officer, any person who have the knowledge about the transfer. Here in question number 41, correct answer is option B that is by the seller only. Question number 42. In a partition proceeding before Tehsildar under section 178 of Land Revenue Code, if question of title is raised before Tehsildar, how many period Tehsildar shall stay the proceedings to file a civil suit and get stay? Options are 6 months, option B 3 months, option C 1 month and option D 15 days. And in question number 42 correct answer is option B that is 3 months. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी थ्री वेदर ट्रांसफर ऑफ ट्रीज स्टैंडिंग ऑन लैंड इज वैलिड ऑप्शन ए इट कैन बी ट्रांसफर्ड विद द लैंड ऑप्शन बी ओनली ट्रीज कैन बी ट्रांसफर्ड ऑप्शन सी स्टैंडिंग ट्रीज कैन नॉट बी ट्रांसफर ऑप्शन डी इट कैन बी ट्रांसफर्ड विद द परमिशन हेयर इन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी थ्री करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी दैट इज स्टैंडिंग ट्रीज कैन नॉट बी ट्रांसफर्ड सेक्शन वन एटी ऑफ द छत्तीसगढ़ लैंड रेवेन्यू कोड क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी फोर द फॉलोइंग लैंड इंक्लूड्स निस्तर पत्रक ऑप्शन आर ऑल एग्रीकल्चर लैंड ऑल ऑन ऑक्युपाइड लैंड ऑल टैंक्स ऑल रोड्स करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज ऑप्शन बी दैट इज ऑल अन ऑक्युपाइड लैंड क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी फाइव वेदर सिविल कोर्ट कैन डिसाइड रिगार्डिंग री इंस्टेटमेंट ऑफ द भू स्वामी इम प्रॉपरली डिस्पोजिस्ट अंडर सेक्शन टू फिफ्टी ऑफ द लैंड रेवेन्यू कोड ऑप्शन आर यस ऑप्शन बी विद द कंसर्ट ऑफ द पार्टीज ऑप्शन सी नो एंड ऑप्शन डी बोथ रेवेन्यू एंड सिविल कोर्ट कैन डिसाइड हेयर इन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी फाइव करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी दैट इज नो क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी सिक्स एवरी प्रोमिस एंड एवरी सेट ऑफ प्रोमिस फॉर्मिंग द कंसिडरेशन फॉर ईच अदर ऑप्शन ए इज अ प्रोमिस ऑप्शन बी इज एन एग्रीमेंट ऑप्शन सी इज कॉल्ड कंसिडरेशन ऑप्शन डी इज कॉल्ड कॉन्ट्रैक्ट Here in question number forty-six, correct answer is option B. That is, every promise and every set of promise is an agreement provided under section two clause E of the Indian Contract Act. Question number forty-seven. When during partition in a family, or it is agreed as a family agreement to maintain the mother, then his contract is option A, void and not enforceable; voidable but enforceable; valid and enforceable; null and void. Here in question number forty-seven, correct answer is option C. That is valid and enforceable. Question number forty-eight. As per Indian law, a person attains majority. Option A, when he has completed twenty-one years. Option B, when he has completed eighteen years. Option C, when he has completed nineteen years. And option D, when he has completed twenty-five years. Correct answer here is option B. That is when he has completed eighteen years. Question number forty-nine. A patient in a lunatic asylum who is at intervals of sound mind. Option A may not contract. Option B may contract during intervals. Option C may contract on medical certificate. And option D may contract after complete sound mind. In question number forty-nine, correct answer is option B. That is may contract during intervals. For more information, you can also read section twelve of the Indian Contract Act. Now let us proceed to question number fifty. A sells by auction to B a horse which A knows to be unsound. A says nothing to B about the horse unsoundness. Option A, this is not fraud in A. Option B, B plays fraud in B. Option C, A did not tell the truth to B. And option D, A did not follow the ethics. Here in question number fifty, correct answer is option A. This is not fraud in A. Here. the illustration of section 17 illustration a of section 17 of the indian contract act can be seen question number 51 a agrees to let her daughter to hire to be concubinage the agreement is option a valid option b morally option c void because it is immoral option d if daughter is major then agreement is valid here in question number 51 correct answer is option c that is void because it is immoral question number 52 a agrees with b to discover treasure by magic option a agreement is valid option b agreement is immoral option c agreement is void option d agreement cannot be done for fictitious treasure Here in question number fifty-two, correct answer is option C. That is, agreement is void. Question number fifty-three. A gives a recognizance, recognizance binding him in a penalty of rupees five hundred to appear in court on a certain day. He forfeits his recognizance. Recognizance. He is liable to pay the whole penalty, to pay half penalty. It depends on the discretion of the judge for no penalty. Here in question number fifty-three, correct answer is option A. That is, to pay the whole penalty. Question number fifty-four. A sells and delivers goods to C. C afterwards, without consideration, agrees to pay for them in default of B. Option A, the agreement is valid. Option B, the agreement is void. Option C, the agreement is voidable. And option D, C has no right to agree. In question number fifty-four, correct answer is option B. That is, agreement is void. Question number fifty-five. A hires a carriage of B. The carriage is unsafe, though B is not aware of it. A is injured. Option A. B is not responsible to A for the injury. Option B. B is responsible to A for the injury. Option C. Both are contributory negligent. And option D. No one is responsible for A's injury. Here in question number fifty-five, correct answer is option B. That is, B is responsible for B is responsible to A for injury. 
क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी सिक्स इन हाउ मेनी ईयर्स अ सेंटेंसेज ऑफ इम्प्रिजनमेंट फॉर लाइफ कैन बी कम्यूटेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट ऑप्शन ए ट्वेंटी ईयर्स ऑप्शन बी एटीन ईयर्स ऑप्शन सी फोर्टीन ईयर्स एंड ऑप्शन डी ट्वेल्व ईयर्स हेयर इन क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी सिक्स करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन सी दैट इज फोर्टीन ईयर्स सेक्शन फिफ्टी फाइव ऑफ आई पी सी विच प्रोवाइड्स ड्यूरेशन ऑफ कम्यूटेशन ऑफ लाइफ इम्प्रिजनमेंट दैट इज इट शुड नॉट बी एक्सीडिंग फोर्टीन ईयर्स सो करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज ऑप्शन सी क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी सेवन द टर्म फॉर विच द कोर्ट डायरेक्ट दी ऑफेंडर टू बी इम्प्रेजेंट इन डिफॉल्ट ऑफ द पेमेंट ऑफ फाइन शेल नॉट एक्सीड करेक्ट आंसर हेयर इज ऑप्शन सी दैट इज वन फोर्थ फॉर मोर इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट दिस क्वेश्चन यू कैन ऑल्सो रिफर टू द सेक्शन सिक्सटी फाइव ऑफ द आई पी सी क्वेश्चन नंबर A is beating Z. Y interferes and A intentionally strikes Y. A intentionally strikes Y as the as the blow given to Y is not a part of the act whereby A voluntarily causes hurt to Z. A is liable to one punishment for voluntarily causing hurt to Z and to another for the blow given to Y. Here in question uh, options are uh, wrong. Option B A will be punished once as it is done during the same transaction. B If Y would have not interfered, A would have not beaten him. So A is not caused blow to Y intentionally. So A will not be punished to cause hurt to Y. And option D, right. Here, question number fifty-eight. Correct answer is option D. That is right. Question number fifty-nine. A a blacksmith is seized by a gang of dacoits and forced by threat of instant death to take his tool and to open the door of B's house. The dacoits, ten in number, loot B's money and jewels and kill B's son. A is guilty of dacoity with murder. Option B is guilty of house breaking and abetment of dacoity. C is not guilty of any offence. D is guilty of making preparation to commit dacoity. Here in question number fifty nine, correct answer is option C. That is, is not guilty of any offence. Question number sixty. A is at the work with hatchet. The head flies off and kills a man who is standing by. No want of proper caution on the part of A. His act is option A murder. Option B culpable homicide, not murder. Option C his act is excusable, not an offence. Option D causing death by negligence. Here in question sixty, correct answer is option C. That is his act is excusable, not an offence. Section eighty is illustration of IPC. This question is section eighty is illustration of IPC. Now let us proceed to question number sixty one. Right of private defence of the body extends to voluntarily causing death if the offence which occasions the exercise of the right. Option A reasonably causes apprehension that a death will be caused. Option B reasonably causes apprehension that a simple injury will be caused. C is of escaping with stolen property immediately after the theft. And option D is of arresting a person who is running away after having committed an offence of voluntarily causing hurt. In question number sixty-one, correct answer is option A. That is reasonably causes apprehension that death will be caused. Question number sixty-two. In Rex versus Govinda, the points of distinction between provisions of the following sections of the IPC are explained. This is a very common question asked in various examination. Correct answer here is option C. That is section two ninety-nine and section three hundred of IPC. Question number sixty-three. A instigates B to murder C. B refuses to do so. Option A. A has not committed any offence. Option B. B is A is guilty of abetting B to commit murder. Option C. A has committed an offence of attempt to murder. And option D. A has committed offence of criminal conspiracy. Here in question number sixty-three, correct answer is option B. That is, A is guilty of abetting B to commit murder. Question number sixty-four. A by putting Z in fear of grievous hurt, dishonestly induces Z to sign and affix his seal to. A blank paper and deliver it to A. Z signs and deliver the paper to A. A is guilty. Option A of forgery. Option B of robbery. Option C of extortion. And option D of cheating. Here in question number sixty-four, correct answer is option C. That is of extortion. Question number sixty-five. A chief judicial magistrate may pass the sentence of A. Imprisonment for a term not exceeding three years, or a fine not exceeding five thousand rupees, or of both. B imprisonment for a term not exceeding five years or a fine not exceeding ten thousand rupees or a both. C imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years or a fine which may extend to any amount or both. And D imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years or a fine not exceeding twelve lakh rupees or both. Here in question number sixty-five, correct answer is option C. That is imprisonment for a term not exceeding seven years or a fine which may extend to any amount or both. Question number sixty-six. 
ए हैज सेक्शुअल इंटरकोर्स विद हिज ओन वाइफ एज अबाउट फोर्टीन ईयर्स विद हर कंसेंट ए कमिटेड नो ऑफेंस रेप इंटरकोर्स विद हिज ओन वाइफ इज नॉट रेप डी एज देयर वॉज कंसेंट हैंस ए के नॉट बी हेल्ड गिल्टी फॉर रेप हेयर इन क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सिक्स करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी दैट इज रेप क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सेवन ए फाइंड अ रिंग लाइंग ऑन लाइंग ऑन द हाई रोड बाई टेकिंग इट ए कमिट्स नो ऑफेंस थेफ्ट क्रिमिनल मिस अप्रोप्रिएशन लूट इन क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी सेवन करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन ए दैट इज नो ऑफेंस क्वेश्चन नंबर सिक्सटी एट द अपील अगेंस्ट एन ऑर्डर ऑफ एक्टल पास बाय द कोर्ट ऑफ जुडिशियल मजिस्ट्रेट फर्स्ट क्लास Shall lie to the court of chief judicial magistrate, the court of session, the high court, the supreme court. Correct answer here is option B. That is the court of session. Question number sixty-nine. A voluntarily confession is admissible in evidence when made to option A, when made to the police officer, option B, to a magistrate having competent jurisdiction, C, to village sarpanch with a request to save him from police. and d where it leads to to no discovery of facts and made to the police officer in question number 69 correct answer is option b a voluntary confession is admissible in evidence when made to a magistrate having competent jurisdiction question number 70 A is not a servant in income tax department, but showing himself as income tax officer, putting raid in B's business center and gets valuable articles. Thus, A commits option A, cheating. Option B, cheating by personation. Option C, robbery. And option D, fraud. Correct answer here is option B, that is cheating by personation, provided in section four hundred sixteen of the IPC. Question number seventy one. A is magistrate in ma in in magist A magist A is magistrate is making report to superior officer about B's character imputation made in good faith and for public good. A commits offence under section 500 IPC, offence under section 501 IPC, no offence as it is within the exception under section 499 and option D under section 504 IPC. In question number 71, correct answer is option C. That is no offence as it is within the exception under section 499. Question number seventy-two. Non-cognizable offence means option A, a police officer has authority to arrest without warrant. Option B, police officer cannot arrest without warrant. Option C, it depends on the discretion of the police officer. And option D, on request of the complainant, arrest can be made. Here in question number seventy-two, correct answer is option B. That is, police officer cannot arrest without warrant. Question number seventy-three. Which statement is true? Option A. Summons case means a case which is not a warrant case. Option B. Summons case means a case through which security is not required. Option C summons case means a case through which offence of theft is tried, and option D summons case means a case in which only summons can be served during trial. Correct answer here is option A. Summons case means a case which is not a warrant case. Question number seventy-four. On an application made by a person apprehending arrest on an accusation of having committed a non-bailable offence, the High Court or the Court of Session may, under Section four thirty-eight CRPC, give the direction that. Option A, he shall not be arrested till further order. Option B, he shall be released on bail without taking him into custody. Option C, in the in the event of such arrest, he shall be released on bail. And option D, in the event of such arrest, he shall be released on bail three days after the arrest. Here in question number seventy four, correct answer is option C. That is, in the event of such arrest, he shall be released on bail. Question number seventy five. Who can make rules or give special orders from time to time consistent with CRPC as to make distribution of business among the subordinate judicial magistrate? Correct answer here is option D. That is the Chief Judicial Magistrate. It is provided under Section Fifteen, Clause Two of CRPC. Now let us proceed to question number seventy-six. For appointment of a special public prosecutor, how many years' experience is required as a practicing advocate? Correct answer is option B. That is ten years. Section twenty four clause eight of the CRPC provides that ten years practicing advocate is required as an experience required for the appointment appointment of the special public prosecutor. Now let us proceed to question number seventy seven. A is magistrate. In his presence, one murder took place during his morning walk. Whether he can arrest the culprit himself? Here the correct answer is option B. That is yes, he can arrest. It is provided under section forty four of the CRPC. Question number seventy-eight: Where the court has no knowledge about the document or thing to be in the possession of any person, whether the court can issue search warrant in such condition? Options are: 
A no option B only in such condition when it is known about specific article option C yes and option D when a specific place or person is specified correct answer here is option C that is yes question number 79 whether any criminal court can impound any document produced before it option A yes option B no option C only civil court can impound and option D with the consent of senior officer it can be impounded correct answer here is in question number 79 is option A that is yes question number 80 only one statement is true amongst the following option a if any person having sufficient means neglects or refuses to maintain his mother she can apply under section 125 crpc option b only wife can get relief under section 125 crpc option c all the children will get order under section 125 crpc and option d no order of maintenance can pass under section 125 crpc here in question number 80 the correct answer is option a that is if any person having sufficient means neglects or refuses to maintain his mother she can apply under section 125 of crpc question number 81 the maximum term of imprisonment avoidable in summary trial is option a three months option b six months option d c one year and option d two years in question number 81 correct answer is option a that is three months sorry question number 81 correct answer is option a that is three months not uh, i was doing here six months no the maximum term of imprisonment avoidable in summary trial is option a that is three months in section 260 262 clause 2 of crpc provides that no sentence of imprisonment for a term exceeding three months shall be passed in any case of summary trials now let us proceed to question number 82 on receipt of first information report for commission of an offense the officer in charge of the police station will send the copy to concerned magistrate under which provision option a under section 154 crpc option b under section 156 crpc option c under section 159 crpc and option d under section 157 crpc here in question number 82 correct answer is option d that is under section 157 of crpc section 157 crpc casts a duty upon the investigation officer uh, to fourth uh, with send a report of the cognizable offense to the concert magistrate question number 83 Whether a person can send fine amount through postal department without appearing in the court in some petty offenses? If yes, under what provisions? Here in question number 83, correct answer is option B. That is under section 206 of CRPC. Question number 84. A is prosecuted for robbery and in doing so voluntarily causes hurt to B. Whether he may be charged under section... 323, 392 and 394 of IPC. Option A, yes. Option B, no. Option C, alternative charge can be framed. And option D, it depends on the wishes of the magistrate which charge be framed. Here in question number 84, correct answer is option A, that is yes. Question number 85. In every criminal trial, when the magistrate finds the accused guilty, he shall pass the sentence after hearing the accused. Option A, wrong it is not required in summons cases option b right without hearing the accused no sentence can be passed and option c it is required only before sending the conviction warrant and option d not required at all in my in any case here in question number 85 correct answer is option b that is right without hearing the accused no sentences can be passed question number 86 a, B and C are charged for robbery and after the trial convicted by first class magistrate thereafter whether for the same fact they can be charged and tried for decoity. Option R, option A, yes. Option B, no. Option C, barred under section 300 CRPC. And option D, there will be illegality. Here in question number 86, correct answer is option A, that is yes. Question number 87. The composition of an offense under section 320 of CRPC shall have the effect of option A, conviction. Option B, discharge. Option C, acquitted. And option D, finish the case. In question number 87, correct answer is option C, that is acquittal. Section 320, Section 320, Clause 8 of CRPC provides that the composition of an offence under this section shall have the effect of an acquittal of the accused with whom the offence has been compounded.
क्वेश्चन नंबर 88 वेदर एनी कंडीशन इंपोज्ड बाय मजिस्ट्रेट व्हेन रिलीजिंग एनी पर्सन ऑन बेल कैन बी सेट असाइड और मॉडिफाइड इफ यस बाय हुम अंडर व्हिच प्रोविजन ऑप्शंस आर बाय द हाई कोर्ट अंडर सेक्शन 482 सीआरपीसी ऑप्शन बी बाय हाई कोर्ट और कोर्ट ऑफ सेशन अंडर सेक्शन 439 सीआरपीसी ऑप्शन बी इज बाय सेशन कोर्ट अंडर सेक्शन 465 ऑफ सीआरपीसी एंड ऑप्शन डी नो कोर्ट कैन सेट असाइड और मॉडिफाइड सच कंडीशन हियर इन क्वेश्चन नंबर 88 करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन बी दैट इज बाय हाई कोर्ट और कोर्ट ऑफ सेशन अंडर सेक्शन 439 सीआरपीसी क्वेश्चन नंबर 89 offense against other laws except ipc if punishable with imprisonment for 3 years and or upwards but not more than 7 years then then correct answer is option a that it will be cognizable and non bailable question number 90 an inspection and inscription on a metal plate or stone is document here the correct answer obviously is option b that is right it is a document question number 91 A is tried for the murder of B by poison. The fact that before the death of B, A procured poison similar to that which was administered to B is option A non-relevant, option B relevant, option C partly relevant, option C neither relevant nor irrelevant. In question number ninety-one, correct answer is option B that is relevant. Question number ninety-two. In which section of Indian Evidence Act a special provision is mentioned regarding evidence relating to the electronic record? Option A. Under section fifty-nine. Option B. Under section sixty-three. Option C. Under section sixty-five. A. And option D. Under section sixty-seven. Clause A. In question number ninety-two, correct answer is option C. That is under section sixty-five A of Indian Evidence Act. Question number ninety-three. A sells B a horse and verbally warrants him sound. A gives A gives B a paper. In these words. Bought of a horse for rupees five hundred. Whether B can prove the verbal warranty? Option yes. Option B barred under section ninety two of Evidence Act. Option C no. And option D under section ninety one of Indian Evidence Act only written documents can be proved. In question number ninety three, correct answer is option A. That is yes. Under section ninety two, illustration G, illustration G of the Indian Evidence Act provides that. If a A sells A, if a A sells B a horse and verbally warrants him sound, this will can this can be proved as as a verbal warranty. Now question number ninety four. A prosecutes B for theft and wishes the court to believe that B admitted the theft to C. Who must prove the admission? Option A A, option B B, option C C, and option D prosecution. In question number ninety four, correct answer is option A. That is. A A prosecutes B for theft and wishes the court to believe that B admitted the theft to C. Who must prove the admission? A must prove the admission. Question number ninety-five. Under which provision of the Indian Evidence Act court shall presume regarding dowry death? The presumption of dowry death is provided under Section one hundred thirteen B of the Indian Evidence Act. Therefore, correct answer will be option C. Question number ninety-six. Dumb witness may give his evidence by writing or signs in open court. Such evidence shall be deemed to be. It will be deemed to be as an oral evidence. So correct answer is option B. And where it is provided, it is provided under section one hundred nineteen of the Indian Evidence Act. Question number ninety seven. In a trial of murder, rape, and dacoity, number of witness is required ten, eight, and six respectively. Option A right. Option B wrong. It required twelve, eight, ten witnesses only. And option C. Judge direct how much witness to be adduced and option D no particular number of witness is required. In question number ninety seven, correct answer is option D. That is no particular number of witnesses is required. Question number ninety eight. If any advocate asks questions without reasonable ground, procedure court which procedure court shall, shall adopt? Option A. Court will not dictate them. Will hear quietly. Report the state bar council will permit to ask. In question number ninety-eight, correct answer is option A. That is, court will not dictate them. Question number ninety-nine. Under which provision a witness can refresh his memory? Option A, under section one hundred forty-five of the Indian Evidence Act. Option C, option B, under section one hundred fifty-nine of Indian Evidence Act. Option C, under section one hundred sixty-five, and option D, under section one fifty-seven of Indian Evidence Act. In question number ninety-nine, correct answer is option B. That is, under section one fifty-nine of the Indian Evidence Act, a witness can refresh his memory. Question number hundred and the last question of this paper. This is the Chhattisgarh Civil Judge Examination 2003 paper, and this is the last question of this paper. Make sure you have already subscribed the channel. Now let us proceed to question number hundred. A a sculptor agrees to sell B all my mods. A has both models. A has both models and tools. Whether evidence can be adduced to show his intention? Option A yes. Option B no. Option C. Inference should be drawn to see the agreement, and option D, oral evidence is not admissible. Here, the correct answer will be option A, yes. 
so finally this paper has been concluded please make sure that you have already liked the and share and subscribe this channel thank you so much thank you for watching